they're doing because they're like, whatever, I don't have to put it down. I don't go out for that reason. There's no entertainment value. I'd rather get a, a carton and eat it in the house. There's nothing to see. No one entertains me in San Francisco. No one puts on a show in a restaurant. There's no show time. What's the point of it? What, the food? I can take a sauce out of a jar and make a better sauce than most of the sauces in the Italian restaurants in San Francisco. I'm sorry to tell you. I'm sorry. I, I, I have guys now that poison me when I go in their restaurant. I have a jar. I open it up. And I put it on, on, on some meat. I put it on some organic uh, grass-fed meat. What's wrong with that? Oh, but then I add to it. I put paprika in the, in the winter. Then I put in red pepper in the winter. Then I put a lot of oregano in in the winter and stuff like that. Or if I'm making chicken, I'm going to a recipe now. The number one and most important spice in chicken cooking is tarragon. Oh, I learned that 15 years ago. Tarragon takes away that gamey, that, uh, that, that call. What do you think they call it foul for? Where do you think the word foul came from? F-O-W-L. It could be F-O-U-L. Especially if it's Colonel Sanders. But anyway, it's fried. Eat fried, you can't smell anything. That's like Bernie Sanders himself. He's like a fried chicken himself. You can't actually smell who he is. But the thing is that tarragon takes away that foul smell. And when you're cooking, very important. But the sauce from a jar is better than most restaurants. Then I put in the garlic and I joke around. I tell Teddy jokes. You put in your sausage, Teddy. You put in your wine. I imitate Fat Clemenza the other night. I had a ball. I was entertaining my dog. I put on a whole show while making chicken chicken uh, cacciatore in my own house. And uh, you put in your wine. You put... <laughs> what is that? They're dog. What do they know? They're like, uh, they're built-in They're built in companions. You put in your sausage. You put in your wine. You put in your sugar. I don't put in the sugar. I said, Teddy, we don't put in sugar. We don't want diabetes and cancer. Where are we already? A quarter to two? My, the show is flying. I reluctantly see the hours going by. I reluctantly see the show going by. This feels like a Friday to me. Doesn't it feel like a Friday? It's like tomorrow is really Thanksgiving, but it isn't. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve. It's not actually the day when they open the gifts on Friday when I'm flying because I have no gifts to give or get. Uh, it's good being a, it's good kind of being a, um, a <laughs> it's, it's good not having to do that stuff on Friday. But the planes are wide open. No one's flying on Friday. I found It's like a fluke. You don't want to go Thursday because everyone who's like doesn't really get along with their family is flying on Thursday to go in the last minute. Like the last second they're flying to like Indiana to see the folks. They don't want dying to get home already before they, they're getting as high as a kite to get on the plane because they can't wait to come home already. But, uh, but Friday's wide open. Every flight was open, so I'm going to go that way. A little uh, bag on the head flight on Southwest. With the bad jokes and no honey peanuts, which I can't eat. Who ruined peanuts with honey? What idiot decided to to roast to to like roast peanuts in, in 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 sugar, a sugar bath? What's wrong with them? I ask myself. I eat a pretzel. That's all. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now eight five five four hundred Savage eight five five four hundred seven two eight two Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica dot com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. Big call at your I got the pictures in the Daily Mail. He's shrinking. Fang is shriveling up. He's on a weight loss regime or something. The guy is, I'm worried about him. President of the United States is, looks like he's shrinking. Shriveling up there on the trail. On the, what trail is he on? In Hawaii. I forget the trail. Coco Head. Selfie the top of Coco Head. Coco Head. I know Coco Head. But he is. He's very skinny. I don't get this. I know it's a stressful job. I mean, if you're spending day and night trying to dismember a nation that's been so good to you, it must be very stressful, especially if you have no conscience about what you're doing and no one there to tell you, hey, you know, back off a little bit, man. Look what you're doing. But, uh, you know, it's a stressful job with all that golf. And meeting all those lobbyists day and night, I mean, it wears you out. It takes weight off you, like uh, melts off you. You are talking about weight loss diet. Melt down the country that's been good to you. Meet with lobbyists around the clock. And play golf. You'll lose a lot of weight. John on KSFO, welcome to the Savage Nation. Michael, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Indeed. So what's on your mind today, John? Well, I got a couple of things. First of all, some would say that yours is a train of consciousness, and I agree, but I'd also add it's really the new Chautauqua. 
And I, I want to tell you, I really appreciate it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You mean my, 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 my format is the new Chautauqua? Yes, you and what you do is the new Chautauqua, don't you know? Kind well, of what, a, is Chautauqua, what, is, what is Chautauqua? What is Chautauqua? My understanding is it's much like uh, the variety of uh, the Catskills and up in the Adirondacks. <laughs> Thank you. I thought it was something high, highbrow and classy. Okay, I'm depressed now. But what's your real question, John? <laughs> The, the intelligence you bring to it makes it such. Okay, that's kind of you. But quick, we only have a half a minute. Fire away. A minute. Curious what, uh, a few months ago you mentioned you bought a mantle set of clocks. So I imagine that's a couple of candles and maybe a marble-based. Uh... Exactly. I collect, I collect French, bronze. <laughs> And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. For millions of American workers, people in New Hampshire, all over America, they're working longer hours for low wages, deeply worried about their kids. So what do we do? First statement we make is we tell the billionaire class they cannot have it all. For a start, Yay. they're going to start paying their fair share of taxes. Your fair share of taxes. Okay, Bernie, so you mean Microsoft? You mean your friend Bill Gates is going to pay his fair share of taxes? You mean Schmidt of Google is going to pay his fair share of taxes? You mean Mark Zuckerberg, your good friend, is going to pay his fair share of taxes? No, you don't mean that. What you mean is BS. You're nothing but a BS artist. Uh, Colonel Sanders is to be more trusted than you are, Bernie. At least his chicken is fried all the way through. All right, Matt, KSFO, welcome. You're on the Savage Nation. You're a Bernie supporter. Why? Michael, I tell you what, we should all get behind that guy. He talks through his nose and his ears and blah, 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 on. But I don't I don't believe he's any kind of a threat to the awesome Mr. Trump. I think I'm not another... Well, that's interesting. You know, it's done that way where, where Republicans who can cross over in a primary should vote for Bernie to make it a, a Trump versus Bernie... Campaign because it would be capitalism versus communism. That's a ninety ten win for Trump. Yeah, I'd I'd say you know how no, they that's are. a brilliant oh. idea. So if you're in a district that permits Repu an open what they call an open primary, Republicans should vote in Democrat primaries and put Bernie in as the candidate. That would be hilarious. Then America could actually see what percentage of the people support uh, communism. Ninety ten top. All right, you get a copy of Government Zero for that brilliant suggestion. Thanks for calling, 855-407-282. That's all. Any topic is fair game. We finished up on the other horrible topics earlier. I don't want to get stuck in them again. If you want to see horror, you want to see horror, go to michaelsavage.com if you want to have a disgusting holiday and see the Yazidi girls being torn away from their parents by the subhumans in ISIS as they take them to rape chambers and trade them for packs of cigarettes and then shoot their fathers. The families being powerless to stop their daughters being stolen from them, their beautiful, pure daughters, as young as eight years of age, raped by these subhumans. And Hillary, the defender of womanhood, says nothing. The thin man on the hike in Hawaii, the shrinking man in Hawaii, nothing to say about ongoing kidnaps, rapes, and slavery. It's, it's sickening. Just sickening. I mean, the, the nightmare, the nightmare, how any Jew can watch this and not scream in a temple, shut your mouth and listen to me. See, every Jew in America should understand that when you say never again, it should be more than just the Jewish people saying never again to Hitler. It should be you saying never again to tyranny like this for any people on the earth. But you don't hear it coming from Abe Foxman of any of the Jewish organizations. Not, none of them. In fact, the opposite is true. Here's the shocking part about liberal Jewish organizations, and I'm sorry to have to be the one to, to, to say this. They are in bed with Hillary Clinton 100% of the way, and they say nothing about the threat of radical Islam. Not one word comes out of the mouths of any of these organizations about the rapes and the murders in the Middle East. Nothing. Instead, they attack Trump. That's the God-honest truth. It's sickening to be living through this. I thought that if we woke up one day and we saw a genocide being committed against people on the earth, rape, industrial-scale rape of young girls, the world would stand up and say, we're stopping this, we're sending in whatever's necessary, we're sending in 10,000 or 100,000 troops into that city, 
and they're going to kill ISIS members. They're going to kill every last one of them. They're not bringing them back to justice. They find them on the battlefield. They have a new writ of orders. Kill them. Kill them. They're not bringing them back. No prisoners. Kill them all. Kill them all. And no, but it isn't happening. Instead, uh, the thin man is on a hike in Hawaii, eating a Slurpee, taking selfies on Cocoa Head. That's what we're putting up with now. And the media is asleep, of course, because they're owned by the same machine. That's all. So we talked about that. I don't want to talk about it again. It's sickening. What do I want to talk about? Somalia cancels Christmas because it threatens Islamic culture. It's a very accepting organization. Islam is very accepting when it has the power. American on, American on the front line, Kurds pleading for U.S. help to destroy ISIS. Uh, Michael Savage newsletter, Beware of Obama's Final Year of Absolute Power. Michael Savage's new book, Government Zero, hits number three on the New York Times bestseller list. Still time to peruse one at the local bookstore. Muslim who wanted to join ISIS once worked as baggage handler at Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport. Muslim American teen indicted for aiding ISIS. U.S. Muslim group announces campaign to fight Islamophobia after San Bernardino slaughter. Oh, yeah. ISIS seeking imp improvised anti-aircraft missile. Let's see what else. Do we? Asian Muslim nation bans Christmas. Yeah, I'm not going to the Beverly Hills Hotel because of that one. Not even for a coffee. Dubai owns it. Forget about it. I'll get a coffee and Kentucky Fried Chicken before I go in there again. And remember I had a show the other day about the Assyrian army? I had the guy on who runs the military for them, fighting against the maniacs. You can help the persecuted Christians through the United Assyrian Appeal. It's on michaelsavage.com. That's, you know, it's all for you to look at. Now, what do you want to talk about? Let's get some new calls up there, Clint. I need as many new calls as I can get. We absolutely have to get new callers as soon as possible. Many new calls as possible on the Savage Nation. It's a pre-Christmas show. It's absolutely positive that we have to have new callers as soon as possible. Because if you want to do a show, you have to have callers. Especially your show, because your show has a lot of callers on it. They're not all right-wing nuts. In fact, every one of them could vote for me if they wanted to, because I am not exactly a left-winger. I'm a total independent communist. And I stand for absolutely nothing. That's exactly why I got so far in Vermont, because the people are all stoned on maple syrup. They've been eating that maple syrup and it went to their head. They don't know who I am, what I am. They're afraid to be calling a bigot, so they voted for me. I pulled the wool over their eyes. A bunch of morons in Vermont. That's how I became a senator. A man like me in my day never could have even worked in a delicatessen selling French fries. But in Vermont, I became a senator. Now I could be a president. God only knows. Uh, I don't know what I want to do here. I just, no, I don't want to do nasty stories about how horrible the world is, right? Can we go in another direction? Do I have any sound that is not going to trigger any kind of rage in me. <laughs> Every piece of sound that you guys got is enraging. Here is a clown on CNN named Don Lemon. He wants he wanted me in my show with my book. I refuse to go on. Um, Don Lemon is looks like a nice guy who, let's put it to you this way. If you were buying a light bulb in a hardware store and you look by Watts, you know, 170 for three-way light bulb, 50, 100, 150, 200-watt bulb maximum. This is like a 30-watter. A He's like a 30-watt bulb max on one, on one click. Here is clip number one, Don Lemon, and clip one on the Savage Nation. Mr. Schlichter, what do you think of that, Kurt? Don, I, it's going to take a lot more for me to get upset at a, a, a woman who enabled a guy who turned the Oval Office into a frat house and his intern into a humidor. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, I just don't care. I so don't care. If I, I would need Stephen Hawking to find the theoretical limit of how little I care about Donald Trump's silly jokes. Absolutely, uh, Kurt. This hypocritical, uh, you know, pearl-clutching nonsense. Have you ever heard a presidential candidate say things like this? No, but I know of a president who, well... All right, that's very funny. Jewish. That's enough. It's too long. He cut off conservative commentator Schlichter, who's very funny, by the way. I never heard of this guy. We should get him to fill in. Not, I don't want him. He's too much of a threat. <laughs> Sounds too smart to fill in for <laughs> me. Um, Hillary Clinton, Trump's vulgarity is no shock, right? She knows. Well, she knows about vulgarity. That's for sure. <laughs> she knows about vulgarity. I mean, with her husband, she had the wolf man. <laughs> This woman is an expert on vulgarity. Okay, we got Sanders mocking Trump. K 
care and 